Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Carlson. I'm a mortgage broker here in Canada. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel to learn a little bit more about mortgage financing. Today we're looking at mortgages for those who are self-employed. Now, if you're an hourly employee and uh, or salaried and you're looking to apply for a mortgage, it's a pretty easy process. A letter of employment from your employer, your most recent pay stub, maybe a T4, that's about it. However, if you're self-employed, the paperwork process is significant. Um, it always has been significant, but these days it certainly isn't getting any less. So I'm going to break this video down into a couple of different sections. So um, the first and most common uh, type of mortgage that people apply for is a purchase mortgage. So if you're looking to purchase a home and you've got maybe 5 or 10% down payment, let's talk about those first. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'd know that a mortgage of less than 20% down means that you're getting an insured mortgage through CMHC, Genworth, or Canada Guarantee. So when it comes to getting a mortgage and qualifying your income uh, with the lenders and the mortgage insurers, the rules are a little bit more strict than if you have more than 20% down. Typically, you need to be self-employed for at least two full tax years and provide your full tax returns and your notices of assessment proving your income from your business. If you're a sole proprietor, then you also need to provide uh, the typical tax documents that come along with your T1 general tax returns is the statement of business activities. If your company is not a sole proprietorship and you are incorporated or are in a partnership, then you need to provide some additional documentation showing the corporate structure of your company. If you are not the sole owner of the company, things get a little bit more difficult. We just have to provide your full T1 general tax returns, your personal tax returns, along with your notice of assessments. So if you're looking to apply for a mortgage and you're self-employed, you've been self-employed for at least two years, you've got your tax returns and your notices of assessment, the key things that we look at when it comes to qualifying your income would be your line 150. Now, in 2019, that changed. It's not line 150 anymore. It's line 15,000 for whatever reason. So. Previous to that, it used to be called Line 150. So that is your personal uh, taxable income that we use. Some of the lenders that we work with will allow us to dig deeper into your tax returns. If you are a sole proprietorship and you've got uh, a vehicle payment that you use for business purposes and uh, you're wearing that personal expense, that's called an add back. So uh, if it's a business expense, we can sort of add that back to your income a little bit more of a dig, dig deeper into your tax return. Some lenders will also just let us do a blanket 15% gross up. So adding 15% to your line 150 or line 15,000 as of 2019 uh, to your income on the mortgage application. Now, if you're self-employed and you're typically trying to keep your income down a little bit, well, that's certainly not gonna help the process when it comes to applying for any sort of mortgage financing or even loans and that sort of thing. The T1 general tax returns uh, and your notice of assessments, those are your income numbers that we look at. Now, if you've really been working hard to reduce your tax burden, well, it could add a little bit of a challenge to applying for your mortgage. Quite a few years ago, if you're looking at some old blog posts or articles from say five or even 10 years ago, you might have come across what's called a stated income for self-employed. Now, that program and those programs have all but disappeared. So. Uh, it used to be, back in the good old days, if you wanted to get a mortgage and you were self-employed, and as long as your income taxes were up to date, and you had maybe say 10% down payment, um, your stated income could just be what you feel it might be relative to your industry. So even if your notice of assessment might have said 10 or $15,000, but somebody in your line of work typically makes 40 or $50,000, then that's uh, typically what we did. Now. The mortgage rules changes in Canada is kind of gone away from using that sort of program. So we don't really have much success doing what's called stated income. What there are uh, stated income programs for are for professionals like uh, dentists, doctors, uh, veterinarians, where they do income projections. So uh, there's only a few different lenders that do these income projections at some of our, our primary lenders like TD and Scotia, where they'll say uh, if you're coming out of, uh, you know, out of medical school or something like that, and uh, you're expected to earn a certain level of income and you're looking to purchase a home, then that is something that we can actually look at doing is do income projections. So that's not necessarily a typically a stated income. It is a little bit, but uh, it just helps to qualify somebody's income when you're potentially starting a new job and you're just new in your field, a professional field, and you can't necessarily qualify on your income. If you're a professional like that, especially in the medical field, then they'll look at uh, using these projections. 
Another unique way that we can look at income for people who are self-employed is if you're in a certain line of work for a long time, so five or 10 years, and uh, you switch over to being self-employed in the identical line of work, then we can actually do what is kind of like projections. We look at what you uh, made uh, as a salaried employee or an hourly employee in that same line of work, and then what you might be expected to earn as a self-employed individual, um, and then we can certainly use that. Um, we don't necessarily need a full two-year history uh, of your self-employed income, as long as you came from a related field, as long as you came from something you worked at for a long time, established a trend of income, and then you're, it's reasonable that your self-employment income might reflect the same. So pretty much an easy situation to go through something like that. Now let's look at the other side of uh, mortgage financing when it comes to say purchases or even mortgage refinancing uh, if you're self-employed and we're keeping the loan to value so um, you know if you're purchasing a home at 20% or 25% down that's called a conventional mortgage it's not CMHC insured or general worth insured it's actually a conventional mortgage so we don't really have to follow the mortgage insurers rules and guidelines when it comes to that we're only following the rules and guidelines with the lenders we work with. Some of the banks that we do work with have relaxed guidelines when it comes to people who are self-employed and do let us use a little bit more income than what we could have if you had less down payment. So if your income isn't quite at the level where you need it to be for uh, an under 20% down payment type of a mortgage, then increasing the down payment past 20% get to send us some territory of some other lenders that will do something like a stated income product where uh, they are look at your income a little bit more easier fashion and can use more ad backs um, and then sort of help you out in a little better way. So when it comes to mortgages for those that have uh, a mortgage that's uh, above that 80% level and you're leaving 20% equity in the house, whether you're doing it as a refinance or doing it as a purchase of 20 or 25% down, there's lots of other options available. Um, some of the lenders that we work with will look at your income in a much more favorable fashion, but there's a little bit of a trade-off where the rates might not be quite as low as what you expect, and there might be a fee or two involved in doing a mortgage like that, but at least there's some mortgage lending out there where they'll look at your tax returns and your uh, notice of assessments in a little bit better light when it comes to qualifying your income. One thing that you have to have in line for pretty much all of this mortgage lending, no matter what type of a mortgage you're going for, whether it's less than 20% down or uh, a mortgage refinance where you're at 80%, then you have to make sure you demonstrate that your income taxes are fully up to date and paid. So they're gonna be looking at your notice of assessment and if there's a balance owing uh, on the bottom of the page there, showing that there's some uh, money owing to Revenue Canada, you're gonna have to provide some additional documentation showing that you paid that account up to date and that there's not anything owing on your current taxes for the previous year. Another thing that you have to have uh, pretty much sorted out in order to get a mortgage for people who are self-employed is excellent credit. If you have any credit difficulties in the past with credit cards or loans, not even as bad as maybe a collection or anything like that, even if you've got some spotty payment history, you've missed some payments over the years, it's just gonna make it that much more difficult for us to get you approved. Already being self-employed and maybe showing very low income on your tax returns, your notice of assessment, that's already enough of a handicap when it comes to getting a mortgage. So we like to make sure that your credit's in excellent shape uh, so that we can find you the best mortgage possible. That's about it for mortgages for those who are self-employed. If you have any additional questions or comments, please put them in the comments uh, section below or feel free to contact me through my website. I'm always happy to correspond with anybody who gets in touch with me. And once again, thank you so much for joining me on my channel and have yourself a great day. Mm -hmm.